Martin's Minute with the superintendent of schools, John Martin, to kind of just giving an update of everything HISD. Mr. Martin, one of the things that I want to touch on first is the bond process, how everything's going with it. I, I, ground's broken out there. You're seeing this West Elementary start to get phased and built into existence. So where are we at on the whole bond process right now? Yes, sir. All right, we'll start. Uh, of course, you know, several years ago, we passed 50, our community passed a $55 million bond. Uh, within that bond, quite a few things, but our two biggest projects will be our West Elementary, located off of Loop 281 over toward Longview, and our, uh, our new auditorium here in Hallsville High School. So the, the, we'll start with the elementary. So West Elementary, as uh, Mr. Smith just, just noted, ground is broken. They've got a lot of forms uh, uh, poured. What we're waiting on now is uh, a vast number of crews. Uh, employment is a little difficult right now, finding enough uh, folks to work. Uh, so we're waiting. They're hoping by the end of this month of September that we have our base concrete poured so we can start going vertical with the building. Switching over to uh, uh, our auditorium. Auditorium is going, if you've driven by lately, you can see you've got a lot of vertical things, a lot of cranes out there, a lot of workers. Uh, they, they are progressing nicely. We're hoping that they are right on time with that, which is probably uh, early to middle January of 2022, uh, when we should be able to get close to be taking over that, that ownership. What, Mr. Martin, and for the people at home listening right now, you've always been part of the process, but you've gone from being kind of just part of the process to now being one of the head, if not the head, on the whole process. What's the biggest difference for you in this whole bond cycle of taking it over, direction it's going? Is there, are there any change with that? Uh, yeah, there, there's some. There's some small changes with that. Uh, I guess one of the most notable changes would be uh, we are now, when you run through a bond process, there's a lot of work that's put into a bond process, getting a bond passed, putting the information out for the community. Once you pass and the community passes a bond, uh, then it, then the things really get a little tricky. Now you're, you're looking for GCs, which are general contractors. You're looking for architects. You're looking for a lot of things. Once the work started, as you alluded to earlier, it's now checks and balances. Are they at the position they say they're at as far as the construction goes? So we, we actually have a, a gentleman that works for us uh, by the name of John Erickson that does all of our construction updating as far as he's the one on site, takes care of a lot of the information that he feeds me. So that's, that kind of helps us keep, keep in line with what's it, going on. And helps everybody hold responsible. And you said, we're gonna kind of tie into off the bond here a little bit, but you talked about shortage with contractors, people at home that are always expecting things to happen overnight. Tell me how much has that shortage of employment, that's everywhere right now, restaurants. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the schools, how it is affecting the schools. But has that just put everything, not at a halt with the bond process, but just truly slowed it down? I'm just thinking for timeline for people at home. It, yeah, it has. And just to kind of give some, some raw numbers out, uh, the, the crews needed for a, a concrete pour the size of West Elementary, you're looking at a, a crew of 45 to 50 uh, uh, personnel pieces. Uh, roughly, they, they've got about 25, so we're, we're trying to acquire an additional 20 to 25 more. Because if you think of the square footage uh, of a building that size, that's you can't take a six-man crew out there and try to pull every bit of that concrete over. I've done a little concrete work right, back, right. back in my day uh, <laughs> before I you know, got into education, but you, you can't do it with a small crew. You've got to have a lot of hands because once concrete comes out of the truck, you got a limited amount of time to work it. It's time to get to work. It is. And, Guy, I'm going to hand it to you because we're actually going to type from the bond concrete shortage to tell me a little bit how all the shortage has affected everything in the school. Guy, will you just kind of help with that? Yeah, I, I know in the, the maintenance department, we're, you know, we're just struggling to keep it up. But I know with other, other departments the same way, teacher-wise, talk about, a little bit about how the shortage of, of all the different places we're in. Okay, yeah, well, that's absolutely correct. So... Uh, and I would probably say across the United States, but definitely we'll just focus on our state of Texas. I know across the state of Texas, there are uh, vast amounts of uh, unfilled vacancies for certified teachers in different areas. Uh, one, of the, one of the things we're very fortunate at Hallsville ISD and blessed to have is pretty much every one of our uh, vacancies that we had coming into this fall, we filled, which we're, we're excited about that. There's a lot of school districts that are not quite as lucky as we are. I know, I know, and you can... The amount of the bus drivers were short in bus drivers. The, without the substitutes, we'd be in trouble here also. Is that 
That's fair a fair statement. That's a very fair statement. We, we, we struggle with, uh, with uh, amount of bus drivers in a normal year. And so, you know, add everything that's going on around here in the last 18 months to two years. Right, right. So that just really compounds our issue with bus drivers. So we're trying to find every, uh, every sensible bus driver we can that has the CDL that will drive a bus and, and pick up and drop off our kids. Like we said, sensible bus drivers. <laughs> now, is there a teacher program or anything like that that helps to fluctuate and fill these positions? How do, how do we do that here in Hallsville? Well, yeah, I'll give you the, just the cliff note version. Typically, we, we run a, an opening on our site. Uh, teachers would apply. We should go through the screening process of interviews and we, we hire. Well, since those numbers have dwindled over the last couple of years, we really wanted to take a hard look at our, our future Teachers of America is what we used to call it back in my day. It's our teacher education prep program now, which is here at Hallsville High School. We wanted to really take a look at that and we, we came into it with the theory of let's do what we can to try to start building the teachers that we're looking for in the future. And so what better ones to build than Hallsville graduates? Uh, I know there's three graduates sitting there in, at this table right now. You build them and what you want to hire is you want to hire folks that want to be here first and that don't, they want to put roots in. They want to stay here. They want to see Halls will succeed. That's what's gotten us to go. And, and a big shout out to uh, uh, Hannah Farrell. Hannah Farrell has taken over my teacher preparation program here at the high school and she's doing some wonderful things uh, early on. So we're very excited about that and hoping that we, in the next few years, will start seeing some, uh, some benefits of this program when our kids come back to work for us. Well, Mr. Martin, we thank you for joining us here in this segment and giving everybody an update of everything that's going out there. Again, want to say a, a big thank you to our sponsor, Roofmasters, our local Hallsville Sonic. This has been Martin's Minute with Superintendent of Schools, John Martin. Guys, thank you all very much. Thank you.